everybody, it's me, the Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl. It's Monday night and this is Twisted Stitches. Thanks so much for joining us. We've got a really busy show tonight and we've got lots going on. So I'm going to get right to our day. Um, just to fill everybody in, orders that, were, uh, that came in over the weekend will be shipped tomorrow morning. So if you're waiting with bated breath for your, your goodies, they're on their way. Um, so tonight we've got a couple of things to cover and I've been promising you that we would be doing a blocking demo. I wanted to finish a special project so that we could use it for the demo. And, uh, so that's what we're going to be doing tonight. So let me just, if I may call your attention to, uh, Timberline. This is a, a vest with a, with cables down the center front and down the center back as well. The rest of it is a simple stockinette stitch. So we've got cables and then we've got the high collar here and which also closes on the inside here. Now, uh, oh, and of course the buttons, we've got eight buttons going up the front. So you notice that it is not a center closure. We've got an off center closure so that our cables are down the center of the garment. So when we're looking at blocking, I, I want to stress that blocking is not uh, something we do to stretch a garment. It's something we do to finish the garment, to give it a professional look, and to even out any rough edges that we might have. And by that, I mean simply uh, looking at this. Paul, if you would just come down here. If you notice right down here how this little piece is um, not quite even. So we're going to use blocking to help get that even. And the same thing here. So blocking allows us to shape the garment so that it's, it's made to what the designer wants us to do without, without compromising the detail of the fabric that you've created. We also have the collar inside here that we're going to be doing a little bit of, uh, of maneuvering with our blocking so that we can straighten that out as well. For the, as far as the rest of it goes, it's a pretty simple design. There's not much I need to do with this. Um, and so we're going to go over to the sink in just a moment. Um, we're in our kitchen because this is the best place for me to block things. So uh, welcome to the Myers kitchen. We do some cooking videos in here as well. But tonight we're going to use it to, to do our blocking. I have my Knitter's Pride blocking mats here and my knit blockers, which are blocking pins, which are a little stubborn. Um, and the blocking pins are great because they have little points on them and they can, and they can um, you know, you can, if you have to hold down your garment, for example, here, if I wanted to move that up once it's been, once it's been wet, I can move it up and then use this to secure it. If I didn't wet it, it would just slide right back down. So step one is to take our, let me just take this pin out here. And I'm going to shake it over to the sink. Now I'm pretty careful when I, when I carry my garments because I don't want to stretch them. And you're going to see that very important once you wet it as well. So I have my sink filled with cool water and I love to use soap. One of the reasons I love soap, well, a couple of reasons, whoa, a couple of reasons. One is that um, I love the fragrances and I love the way it gets my garment nice and soft and you don't have to rinse it. So I put a generous squirt in there and just kind of swish it around. I probably want a little more. So here we are. I have my jacket, my, my vest and the water is nice and cool. I'm just going to take the whole thing and submerse it and get it nice and wet. And you see that, you know, the little bubbles I'm creating, I want to make sure that that soap wash wets the whole garment. Now this is going to be like trying to lift a dog out of the water once it's been wet. So I'm going to take my time. Now, Oftentimes you'll be, you know, you'll read that it says to um, let the garment soak for 10 minutes. We don't have 10 minutes today, so we're going to just wet it 
I'm sure my fibers are relaxed enough by now. And you'll see I have my towel here. Now, this is not about, um, I guess I should say what you want is a nice absorbent towel. Some of those thick towels aren't really absorbent sometimes. So you want one that's really nice and thirsty and it's going to absorb the water because you're going to squeeze as much of the water out of the garment that you possibly can without twisting your piece. And then what I'm going to do is take it and I'm going to lay it out. And as I mentioned, this is a really big piece, so we'll be very careful as we work with it. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to start from one end, and I'm going to roll it into the towel so that I can get all that extra moisture or water, I should say, out of it. And so I'm rolling it into the towel. I use a nice big beach towel. and I can feel all the moisture that's in it. This is what happens when you're Italian, you're used to rolling dough. So you're good at this. And to be sure that I have most of the water out of it, I then take it and I give it my Lucy Ricardo stomp. And then I pick it up. Now, I have a funny feeling this might need even a little bit more absorbent. Oh, no, not so bad. So now, carefully, when you lift your garment, you want to be very careful with it. You don't want to stretch it especially when it's as heavy as this. Jillian Goldrich says, Sham, Sham Wow works great instead of a towel. I use two and then roll up oh, and stomp on it. <laughs> oh, a chamois. A <laughs> Mr. I wash cars all the time. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's a spell check changes the spelling of the word. Okay, chamois. so now remember before, we were looking at the edge here, how that edge was pulled up. So now, I can just take it and I can position that edge right where I want it. Again, I'm not stretching. I'm just setting things into place. Pull my bottom down. Nice and flat here. Now, again, see, I'm, I'm taking my, my piece and I am making sure that it's not spread out. I'm not trying to change my stitches. Rita Johnson Cutterman, hello from Eureka, California. Eureka, hello, hello. And so I'm just going to come on this side now. Again, I'm gonna give that a little tug. I might take a blocking pin there. Donna Hart, this is really helpful. I'm glad, Donna. I'm going to take this and I'm just going to take it and set it down like I that. can answer this one. What's it says, that? do you recommend blocking shawls? Some of them you do, right? <laughs> yes. The only thing I don't recommend blocking is cotton and acrylic. Now, I block cotton, but you can block... Actually, I block cotton. I went block cotton as well. But um, acrylic just has so much spring to it, it's not going to block. Um, so yes, I, I block uh, shawls all the time. And this is where your pins, your blocking pins come in really handy with, handy with shawls, especially when you've got pico edges and points on the shawl um, that, you know, when, when you've got, if it's a crescent shape, the pins help you to put that shawl the, into the shape that it needs to be. Look at the alpaca. This is, uh, by the way, Andiamo is the yarn that we're working with. This is a new Jody Long yarn, and um, it is a um, Peruvian wool and alpaca. So you're seeing a little bit of uh, a movement there from the fiber. And so I'm going to take this, and I'm going to make sure that this is all... Really? Okay. So she lost audio. 
Just checking something here. I'm going to pull this down a little bit. The audio is gone now? I'm not sure. Rita, let us know if you have audio back. How can she hear me if she doesn't have audio? I'm going to pull this down a little bit. Yeah, there's audio. Okay. All your pieces in the right place. So now this, this piece happens to have a very high collar on it. And the collar also has buttons so that it can button all the way up or you can wear it open. So I'm just making sure that all my, my button locations, my button holes are even. Maureen Scott says she has audio as does Anna Maria and Jillian and Linda. Okay. All right. So let's take a look at what we've got here now and just point out a few things. You notice my cables are still intact. The design is as it should be. My sweater is even on the top and the bottom. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do with this is I am just going, so this is where you walk away and you let it be. Now, you might come back in a little while and, you know, kind of fiddle with it. But, I mean, it looks to me like everything is in the right place. I have my collar. I can see the, sh the shape of my, of my shoulders going down. Which means my cables in the back or above my cables behind the cables in the front and line ups also a lot more blocking uh needed in them than something like this this actually the the yarn has done a beautiful job so now i'm you know i'm pretty much done with this process so i'm just going to uh take my goodness i didn't even need any pins on this this is perfect i'm feeling really good about the way this has come together my next step when this is done is once it's dry, and it'll probably wind up going out on the deck tomorrow if it doesn't rain to dry out there because, again, this is very heavy. So maybe a fan overnight or something to, to help it dry a bit. Okay. All right. So we're good. Are there any questions I can answer before we head downstairs? Now, just to give everybody a heads up, uh, what happens now is we have to disconnect from the uh, Wi-Fi upstairs and then bring the laptop downstairs. And in that process, there is the possibility that we may, may lose some signal momentarily. Uh, that signal will come back once we have everything plugged in. When we get down, we've got, I've got some great things to show you. We've got some new yarns in. Um, and I'll fill you in on some things that are coming up in the next uh, couple of weeks. We have uh, lots of things going on here. Vitty Gritty Yarn Girl does not sit idle. Um, it's, a, it's a busy day getting ready for the show, and then we just get ready for the next things that are happening. So, you love, I, and Maria loves my cup. Thanks, my Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl cup. I also have a Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl. Um, let me show that to the crew out there. You can see that my nitty gritty yarn girl cup and my nitty gritty yarn girl phone and I just keep it all going just as we should so um, so what am I going to tell you about let's see coming up oh Vogue Knitting Live again virtual Vogue Knitting Live is August 13th through the 16th and nitty gritty yarn girl will be there again with some new things to to share with you and all the folks at vogue knitting live in the marketplace um so keep an eye on that i've got some new some new projects that have just been finished using uh, uh pretty pretty yarns downstairs and um and i'm also working on a test knit right now for art yarns so we've got a lot happening for juniper moon farms um trunk show coming up. As the new yarns are being released for the winter months, 
we have truck shows lined up. Um, there are new yarns by Juniper Moon Farm, some gorgeous uh, Beatrix and Celestina, um, as well as the new yarns. Andiamo is a new one from Jody Long and, um, and New Colors in Alba. So we've got so much that we're going to be sharing with you over the next couple of months. And bring you back tomorrow. Boy, oh boy. I feel like we should be doing silent movies tonight. Okay, so a couple of things I want to share with you. Very popular. Um, got a lot of activity last week, so I wanted to go over with you. This is the Boxy Cardigan. We are, we had focused on the Nora Silk Garden book last week, um, along with some other fashions from um, Cornelia Tuttle Hamilton. And so the, uh, the Boxy Cardigan is in this book, and this is knitted with Nora Silk Garden. And our, uh, you know what, I'm going to, I'm going to stay here so that we don't, we don't disturb the technology right now. And then I'll move, we'll move around in a little bit so that I can. Jillian says, finish my test knits so I have my needles ready to go. Well, good for you, because we have your yarn ready to go too. And so what, what Jillian is talking about is this lovely top notch pullover. This is the, um, the pullover that was on the mannequin behind Cornelia Hamilton last week. And this is knitted with Tayo and two different, two different colors of Tayo throughout. So I, I just think Tayo is one of the most beautiful yarns ever. I love the colors and the texture of this yarn. This is a cotton, silk, wool, and polyamide. And it is just the, the way the colors run are just so beautiful. Can you just that row right there? Yep, some great color combinations. So we put together colors, um, of course, using the with one color kit is the colors that Cornelia used in hers, which are 116 and 130. And then I put together some additional color combinations for you as well. So if you see colors, though, in the combinations and you'd like to switch those around a little bit, Again, always just send me a note and we'll take care of that for you. Carolyn no Noller says, thank you for your help earlier. Oh, you're welcome, Carolyn. I'm glad I could help. So we did a boxy cardigan and then the top notch pullover. And, you know, there are some bonus things when you when you get this book. And I, I you may remember that uh, many of the patterns that are in this book are not available as individual patterns. So the when you look at the kits like the boxy cardigan, includes the cost of the book in there and uh, you know there, there are some really great patterns that uh, you know i kind of call them bonus patterns when you find a book like this because uh, for example this is actually the piece that's on the cover this show this scarf is just so beautiful and you know when we think about it we usually buy the book for the larger project your gorgeous yarn and then there's also these great socks that are in there as well. So, um, you know, if you buy the if you buy the book for the for your cardigan or um, the the drape the the drape shawl sweater or the shawl, there are some really really fun pieces that are in there as well. So this is the I can't remember what this is called the drape edge. Oh, here I have to look at this again. The drape front cardigan, and this is knitted with with Silk Garden Solo, a Silk Garden sock solo. So this is a sock. There's version of sock yarn, and um, these are the great colors that we have. So you would use a, you know, a multicolor with the solid, and uh, you know. So of course, if you're looking at that, there's something similar to this and this in that, but. I kind of think this is Jody's really... watching from the hotel emoji face. I think that's a really pretty combination too. You know, if you picture the sweater, the body of the sweater in this, in this stripe, and then the rose as the sleeves or um, look at this blue and gold here. And either that or this. So we've got some combinations there for you. Um, that will look really lovely. I love the gray and the and the black and gray. Really pretty. Anna Maria says hats are really fun and quick. Uh, yes, and Anna Maria, <laughs> really quick, Anna Maria, because you needed what, two this weekend? 
I do believe that's what you said. You got two done this weekend. So lots of pretty colors here. Now we put that together, you know, we put together kits for the sweater, but don't hesitate to look through those colors and see if there's something else in the book that you'd like. And, you know, and use these, these colors as well. This little item here got lots of attention. I don't know if it was the little, the little pom poms on the end or the, the shape of the, um, of the edging here with the short rows. This is a very, very popular item and it is the sunburst shawl. And again, silk garden, uh, uh, sorry, silk garden sock. So this is that sock yarn and, and that's on your website as well. That's on the website as well. So all these, the sweater, the two sweaters, this cardigan, uh, the shawl, the starburst cowl or sunburst cowl. Uh, those are all on the website. And don't forget, we've got the books that are available individually as well as not just the silk garden book but noro's um noro meet the man that uh cornelia Tuttle hamilton wrote as well what color is the sunburst all in okay donna so harn wants to know take a peek and see here i'm afraid to move that the you stand right where you are if, if you're getting if you can if you can get a reception there then i will um I'll, I'll move to you. So this is a Silk Garden sock. This is in color 415. Now, keep in mind, colors don't stay around forever. And oftentimes what, um, what a company will do will discontinue one color and offer another. I don't know if that one, is that one that I have? Because this is an awful lot like it. Let's see. No, this is color 87. And so it's got the greens in it. You stay right there. <laughs> so if, here's how I look at it. So we've got our pinks and our mauves. We've got our green. We've got some blues in there. So this is very similar. I think this color is, has been discontinued. And this is probably something that, um, that would be used for. Oh, wait a minute. This is Silk Garden. And that's Silk Garden Sock. One moment, please. So I would look to see if that was available, but if not, this would be my alternate choice for it. That's about as close to that one as, uh, as you're going to get. So That's pretty close. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it happens, a lot, it happens often. It's just like when you're, when you're buying clothes in a store, you know, styles stay in colors change and things like that. And so designers decide to come up with a different way to, to just kind of run those same those same color that colorway but in a different combination so this is pretty close another example is um is the boxy cardigan that color is no longer available but you know you would never even know the difference if you you know using something like that instead so this is the color that we recommend if you wanted that red and you know, yesterday I had someone. Um, I was talking with someone about the colors for their own for their own um, piece, and you know things like this are they're pretty universal. So whether you're wearing them with a pair of jeans or a, you know a pair of black slacks or anything, they really do go with everything. And there's something about the Nora yarn I think that kind of makes it a universal color no matter what it is and, and cornelia talked about the colors last week how you know you would look at those colors and go oh i don't know about that and then they all work so well together and i you know what actually when i got dressed tonight i said i wanted to wear something as colorful as the nora yarns and that's why i chose this because i just think these colors are so lively and they make me feel so happy um when i wear them even something as simple as the grays and blacks um you know this little diamond cowl the colors in that you're using i think there's two different yarns yes there's there are two different silk garden sock colors in here so the way the colors run is just beautiful 
So again, just wanted to recap the different things from from the Noro show that we had last week. I know we, you know, we spent a lot of time with Cornelia, and that was really important. And I wanted you to be able to have the best of everything. And so spending that time with her was so special, and I'm so glad that she was here with us, and that you had such great conversation with her while she was on the show. Um, I just want to grab my calendar. So if you want to just walk here, Paul, I'm going <clears> to <throat> grab my calendar so I have my dates for things that are coming up. We went over a little bit, but we had lost signal for okay. some. So. Okay, I'm just concerned about your time, everyone. Oh, those of you who are uh, in the path of hurricane, please stay safe. I was uh, talking with uh, Carolyn Noller this afternoon or a little bit earlier before the show and um, the hurricane is headed her way. And for any of you who are in the path, just stay safe, stay home. And uh, I hope you don't lose power. Look at us, we don't even have a hurricane. We keep losing internet service. So I mentioned that we're going to be on um, Vogue Knitting Live again, a virtual Vogue Knitting Live. So that's going to be Thursday the 13th through the si Sunday the 16th of August. And then uh, Juniper Farms Trunk Show is scheduled for August 31st. And um, we're going to be doing something with 50 shades of mohair uh, <laughs> coming up. Um, in September. So, and then we've got more Noro coming into the end of September. So rest assured, we've got lots to show you. And next week, or let's see, yeah, next week during the, during the Vogue Knitting Live, watch for some, uh, some great new fashions coming up that oh, we've created using Rainbow Beach by Queensland Connection, a uh, collection, and, um, and some others using the KFI indulgence sport. So we've got a lot going on. I will see you next week on Twisted Stitches. Thank you so much for being with us and for your patience and indulgence during our, uh, our internet crisis. And I think if you get any questions, just post them on the, on the page and I will answer them for you. Have a great week. We'll see you soon. Remember to share this with all your buddies and let them know that Nitty Gritty Yarn Girl and Twisted Stitches are here every Monday. Ooh, ooh, ooh.